Well, here's the aftermath from our first trip to the Placerville Speedway. Got upside down entering turn one uh, with some contact from another car. Just to start going through, you can see the front bumper. I would say that's junked. Destroyed the front wing, front wing posts. Front axle is 100% bent. You could see it cocked back here on the right side. The front definitely absorbed most of the damage, as well as the top wing, which we actually left at the track and a couple of fans took home as a souvenir. But I did get to keep half of it with the right side panel. We also have a little bit of a mess from being upside down and where all the fluid was leaking by the engine. But as we get back here to the rear part of the race car, everything appears to be all right. We're obviously gonna go through and double check. But if you spin the torque ball, which is a huge indicator, it's fairly free. The rear end looks all right, our rear arm seems okay our shocks are still connected the right front shock did take a pretty big beating we actually took it off the car that was at the track and it actually ripped off uh, from the rear stud that was mounted down here and in a situation like that it's actually good that it ripped out the stud from the front axle and the shock all stayed in one piece because then the shock is still possibly all right where if it you know rips off and the stud stays in and then the shock comes apart then it needs to be repaired so unfortunately the incident is going to create definitely some extra work this week but that is what we sign up for in the sport of dirt track racing. After watching the video back, sleeping on it for a night and just trying to see all the different angles, I would just classify it as a, uh, a racing deal. I mean, Placerville, it's really tight. It was my first time there. It's like running outlaw carts on a small track. Everybody's fighting for similar lanes. You're going for it. You know, you're stop and go every corner trying to get on the gas, get going, and then slow up not to hit the people in front of you. And just on a restart, we got racing hard. I tried to shoot a hole that, you know, started to close up. In a shot to not just destroy the guy in front of me, I tried to get sideways and, and maybe go left, and the infield was there, and I ended up upside down. So uh, pretty much the same feelings I had after the A-Main event, just if anything, a frustrating deal that uh, is just, like I said, a part of our sport. So I'm gonna get to work. Before we start taking anything apart though, it's important to get this thing clean because it's a lot easier to work on a clean race car than a dirty one. So it's a, a good thing we got our washing done yesterday. It's Monday morning about 9.30 a.m. I came down to get started on the race car and it's literally snowing here in Southern Oregon. Like it, it's April and in the last couple of weeks it was like 80 degrees and now we're dealing with this. But this is a great excuse for me to get some more work done and be in the shop. First objective this morning is I gotta pull this front axle out and our 360 engine. Now swapping front axles is actually one of the most simple things on a sprint car. You see all the time with the World of Outlaws or All-Stars, the guys that need every single point during the season. You know, maybe for example, David Gravel. He wrecks on track up front. He comes in, they have to swap the whole front axle. They can do that in about two minutes. You can see it just has a couple of connection points with the drag link, the left front radius rod, the pan hard bar, and our top and bottom radius rods on the right side. And then of course it also has a left and right front shock attack to it. So the most experienced crew guys that have a system down, they know what to do when a car comes in the hot pit, they can get it fixed and get a guy back out there to where he can still run at pretty close to full potential, you know, and pass a lot of race cars. And also most times when accidents happen, like what happened at Placerville, the front axle can be one of the first things that gets knocked out and needs to be replaced. So I'm going to get to work right now. Like I mentioned, we're going to replace that. We're also going to pull the engine out and just get started on some of our weekly maintenance on the 18T to prepare it for its next show. Okay, so the front axle is out, and now the front of the race car looks a little empty. We're gonna go through and check everything, but it looks like we're only gonna have to replace the axle itself, which means hopefully all this other stuff is still good as far as the hub, spindle, and even the steering arm. But you can see it even more clearly there. Front axle is smoked. 
So I figured after I removed the front axle, I might as well pull the engine out as well. This was something that was gonna need to be done regardless. So it also gave us a little bit more room just kind of up front, not having it in. Then I moved to the rear end to start removing our rear arms. And then I could pull the torsion bars out and re-grease those. Make sure, you know, to clean it all up after I wash so nothing uh, rust. And then later that would lead to the process of me re-squaring the rear end after our incident. Now, since I had the front axle out, my dad started taking it apart so he could remove all those components and put it on our new front axle that we had as a spare in our trailer. This is as simple as just, you know, pulling it off one and putting it on the other. If you take your time, make sure to use grease and, you know, just put it together properly. You should have no issues. My dad is uh, pretty good at this. And as you could see, we had it in the vise, so it made it easy to work on both the left and right side. And then once you complete that, it uh, slides in as easy as it came out. Sit there. Well, Dad got the uh, spare axle built. Probably should build another one. I'm just thinking it's probably. <laughs> no, it just. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're wrong. As I mentioned though, just fix the axle. Everything else, all the other components came right off, you know, the one we had just broke. Which made it nice, little 30, 45 minutes, just kind of take your time, take it all apart, put it all back together. So now that the front axle is sitting in the car, we needed to hook it up with the radius rods. Luckily, none of our radius rods were even hurt or bent in the incident. Just the front axle took the beating and everything else was all right, but I still took them off inspected each end as well as the rod itself just to make sure I didn't miss anything and we didn't have to pull out any of our spares. Now, once we got the front end all hooked up, it was time to move to the rear, which I had disconnected earlier, and we started the squaring process. Now, squaring a rear end is very important. That is where you measure from the motor plate to the center of the axle itself. It has to measure a certain length on each side to be in the proper position, and this is what keeps everything free as you are racing throughout the night. So you guys saw what this looked like on Monday. And now that it's Friday, it feels like it is summer again. So what a crazy turn of events as far as the weather here in Southern Oregon. Now, unfortunately, I have some bad news to kind of wrap up this video. We are not gonna be racing anywhere this weekend. Originally, we were planning to head north to the Grace Harbor Raceway for their season opener, and they have not canceled yet, but the weather just looks way too sketchy to travel that far. It's been pretty much raining every day this week, and it's supposed to stop at like 3 p.m. on Saturday, which is, I guess, roughly when you would start. But just because it's supposed to stop raining doesn't mean it's not going to rain enough to wash it all out. And since we're diehard racers, just because where we had scheduled to race didn't look like it was going to run, we already looked at our other options. But unfortunately, most places on the West Coast just don't look like they're going to be able to get this weekend in. And with our busy schedule, we're just going to take this weekend to kind of continue building up our program. We have plenty of things that we can do in the shop. We also have to get Carly's car ready because we have some exciting news for her program as she is supposed to hit the track very soon. My car kind of looks the same as earlier this week. Even though it does kind of look all apart right now, it's actually pretty close to race ready. We just need to drop an engine in. I got to get all the panels back on. I told you guys how we re-squared the rear end and it is now sitting very pretty. Torque ball spins nice and freely. So as I always say, just trying to do some of our due diligence in the shop. We're going to try to get my car all ready by the end of the weekend. We're going to have Carly stuff ready by the end of the weekend. So to sum it up, we are not sitting at home this weekend by choice we really wanted to race it's just not worth you know to travel so far to some of these places with the possibility we might just turn around and come back home and also then usually everything's a muddy mess because the rain and all that but thank you guys so much for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed seeing a little bit of you know unfortunately what we tore up this last weekend but the process of you know beginning to fix it and i will continue to show you guys our next steps in the videos coming up on the channel so thank you all i love your support i love the community we have here and i can't wait to see what the rest of 2022 has in store. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace.